Why is my computer so slow? It's a question I used to wake up and ask myself every morning. But after playing with graphics settings in a bid to boost my frame rates and get every last drop of juice from my PC, now I just wake up and silently stare into the mirror for 15 minutes before leaving for work. I'm Griff for PC Games N, and if you want to play the newest games without your computer filing a restraining order against you, these are the six graphics settings you can tweak to give you a performance increase that doesn't sacrifice the pretties. Don't sacrifice the pretties. The first graphic setting you should consider turning off if you want to boost your FPS without lowering the game's visuals too much is Reflections. Reflections are hugely demanding, rendering another version of the game world multiple times a second from rapidly changing viewpoints. Knock Reflections down to low and you'll lessen the stranglehold on your system without completely ruining the immersion. Yeah, you better run, training bot. Turning them off altogether is a step too far for me. You do need those shiny services bouncing information back, otherwise it looks overly cartoony. So get those reflections on low. That said, turning them off will get you even better results than just knocking them down to medium. Check out our graph. You cannot argue with a graph. I'll stand up and call that. So if you only want to sacrifice one thing in your quest for higher performance, make your reflections. Looking good, Agent 47, but not that good. Number two on the list of graphic settings it's okay to turn off is super sampling, which you'll find under the name render scale in most games. Now, if you don't know what super sampling is, basically it renders the game at a higher resolution and then downscales this back to your monitor's native resolution, making it appear all nice and crisp. While it's a useful tool when you have a little more horsepower to play with, it's also one of those little luxuries you can afford to turn off. The opposite of supersampling is subsampling. Subsampling renders your game at a lower detail than your native resolution and then upscales it back. Check out our results with Overwatch. That's over 30 extra frames gained. It will look slightly blurrier, granted, but if you do need to downtune your graphic settings to play the latest games, try getting your render scale down to 75% or so. You might not even need to touch any other option. You've met your match once again, training bots. Okay, we are talking shadows now, and excuse me while we get a bit more in-depth. That's the in-depth klaxon there. Shadows are more demanding than you might think. They're hyper-intensive on your GPU and often a big detriment to your frame rate. One method a lot of games use is called shadow mapping, which renders an entire scene out a second time. You don't want that extra process when you've got a dated rig and every frame counts. Dropping shadows to their lowest setting, therefore, is a good way to take the load off your GPU and bump up the performance. Like with reflections, you don't want to turn off shadows altogether unless absolutely necessary as they do add a sense of depth. But depending on the game, you may barely even notice the quality of the shadows, so turn them down to give your frame rate a bump. Number four, and continuing on the topic of shadows, another type of shadow technique games such as No Man's Sky and COD like to use is called ambient occlusion. This relates to the distribution of ambient light, specifically how objects block and reflect light to other objects. You'll notice it particularly where the space between level geometry is small, i.e. corners and edges and things like that. To give you a few examples, SSAO stands for Screen Space Ambient Occlusion, which is the least intensive method of increasing the shadow and lighting quality, while HBAO or Horizon-based Ambient Occlusion offers slightly better quality at a much greater performance hit. So if you're struggling for frames, either switch to SSAO or turn it off entirely. In my opinion, you do not want to use HBAO, it's just too intensive. Now you will lose some of the fine shadow details and reflected color on objects and characters with SSAO as opposed to HBAO, but it's hard to care when your gameplay looks this silky smooth. Number five, it's anti-aliasing, the technique developed to stop lines and edges looking like a wonky staircase, and some forms of anti-aliasing are more taxing on your hardware than others. SSAA is one to avoid if you want smoother performance. It basically super samples the whole screen and then puts it back together again to make everything look less jagged, which, as you can imagine, takes a lot of computing power. Here's what Hitman looks like with SSAA, more specifically, a wind chime. 
Turn it down and there's only a small loss visually, but the gains you'll make on your FPS are massive. In terms of anti-aliasing with the lowest impact, FXAA is the best, working its magic directly on the pixels rather than the polygons or line edges. It does make things a little blurry though compared to other anti-aliasing techniques. This is with FXAA on and off. The robot is much sharper without FXAA as you can see. So if you're looking for the perfect middle ground between accurate anti-aliasing and low performance hits, SMAA is often the way to go. SMAA is essentially a good middle ground between FXAA and SSAA. And if all these abbreviations were hard to follow, here's the summary. SSAA no, FXAA no, SMAA yes. Oh god, that was hard. We'll end with post-processing, which is the collective term for all the tweaks and upgrades that games do after the first render pass. Turning them off can greatly increase performance. Many of them focus on mimicking the effects of a video camera lens, so depth of field, lens flare and chromatic aberration. You can keep these on as they're mostly cosmetic and not that intensive to run. Motion blur, on the other hand, is one that does tend to reduce the frame rate, so it's best to turn it off. Something you'll want to turn off even more is interactive smoke, which is smoke that's affected by light and objects. It looks cool, but you know, turn it off. Turn that off right now, that's too much smoke. And for an even greater performance boost, stay away from those proprietary graphical techniques you only see in certain games, like Enhanced Rain and Interactive Paper Debris in Batman Arkham Knight, or Nvidia Hairworks in The Witcher 3. It looks lovely, but you know, we're aiming for frames here. Don't worry, we'll be covering all the best gaming hair options in another video. So there you have it. With a quick trip to the options menu, you can ditch the superfluous settings and experience smooth gameplay on the latest games. You don't need to sell even a single kidney for new PC parts. That's something I uh, wish I knew earlier. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to us here at PC Games End for more videos like this one and for other videos not like this one.